Alright AP Art History students, it's time for your first review. We're going to be going over content area 1, Global Prehistory. So keep in mind that all of these works are from around the world. Uh, we have everywhere from the Americas to Africa to Europe and the Middle East. And we've kind of taken a, a large area, an extremely large area, and in this unit by the College Board and condensed it into just a sampling of our prehistoric important artworks. So we're going to go in order here. We're going to go in the order that these are listed in the AP Art History, uh, their, their numbers and the curriculum by the College Board. So. Number one, we have the Apollo 11 stones. Now, remember that these are not actually from space and have nothing to do with the actual Apollo 11. They were just called that because of the time that they were found. Apollo 11 was on the radio. Uh, that, so that's just what we call them. For form, you can just say pigment on stone. It does not matter what kind of stone. And you can also say stylized. Remember our big words stylized and anthropomorphic. This is not anthropomorphic because remember that's human, but it is stylized. It is portable art. We're not entirely sure um, what almost any of these were, uh, the exact function of them were, but we do know that this was able to be moved. Um, and we do know that it was probably a ritualistic purpose. For content, you have a four-legged animal uh, we do know that there is possible human back legs because of the position of the foot, and it was found in Africa. It is one of the oldest works ever found, which was actually a past multiple choice question. One of the oldest works ever found. For number two, you have Great Hall of the Bulls, also called the Caves at Lascaux, located in Lascaux, France, uh, and it's going to be pigment on a stone cave wall. Again, this is stylized, not anthropomorphic. For your function, we do know that this was a sacred space. Um, think of, you know, that transition from the outside to the inside, from a very large communal area to kind of a dark, close area. We know that it was ritualistic and or religious space because of this. For content, you could say there are bison or buffalo and deer, and they are stampeding. Uh, we have some overlapping figures, some figures that are larger than other. You could also say for, for that that it's mainly um, brown and black lines with minimal shading. For context, again, keep in mind this was found deep inside of a cave so that it was not a public area. It was special. And today there are no visitors allowed because of the carbon dioxide damaging the art. However, you can visit that replica. Number three is the camelid sacrum in shape of a canine. Remember that a camelid is uh, either a camel or a llama, something from that family. And sacrum is a part of bone that would be at the base of the spine or in the pelvis. So we have this that is very detailed carved in the shape of a canine or a dog. So we do know that this is stylized, again, not anthropomorphic. We don't know its function. This is something that's very obscure, but we probably know that it's ritualistic, very similar to the Apollo 11 stones. It is portable, not fixed. For content, there is the shape of a dog. It's very detailed. You can see its two ears and its eyes and its snout. And for context, this was found in Mexico or Mesoamerica. It is based on the native animals that were found there. So the dogs or the canines that would be around the area. Number four is running horned woman. For some reason, uh, my students forget Running Horned Woman a lot or don't understand it very much. Uh, it is hard to identify what these shapes are if you just have the carved picture. Thankfully, the one in the 250 does have this white and black value added to it. 
So for form, we have pigment and carving uh, on the stone cliff wall. It is stylized and it's anthropomorphic because we do have a human figure here. For function, this was ritualistic or religious. It's not decorative. Keep in mind that none of the works in this unit would be just purely decorative. For content, you have a dancing goddess, um, and you can tell that the figure is the goddess because of the horns and what she is wearing. And you can also tell that she is either more important or uh, a spiritual being because she is so much larger than the other people. This was North African and is also considered one of the earliest works ever found. Number five is bushel with ibex motifs, also sometimes called beaker with ibex motifs. You can use that if you are writing an essay about this work. That's just fine, beaker or bushel. And it is essentially a vessel or a cup or a vase. Um, we're not quite sure what to call that. So we just say it's a carved and painted vessel. It is stylized, not anthropomorphic, no humans here. It functioned as a grave marker, we think, kind of like an urn that you would place on, on a grave, maybe to put flowers in or something like that today. For content, you have the ram at the bottom with those stylized, overly large horns, and that is the ibex. And then the birds at the top are considered to be flamingos because of their large necks. Uh, for context, we have this one from the Middle East, and the civilization was called Susa, which is in modern day Iran. If you can remember any of those, that's great. That should be enough to get you that point if you're writing an essay about it. However, if you can remember all of this, Middle East, Susa, and modern day Iran, you might get bonus points for that. For number six, we have the anthropomorphic steel. And this one's easy. We know it is anthropomorphic, obviously. It's also stylized and very simple with geometric facial figures and those straight lines to mark out his sash or his sword. So we have uh, a grave marker here. A steel is a long rectangular piece of stone that is usually a grave marker, sort of like a gravestone that you would have today. For content, we have a human with sword and a robe tied together by a sash. Uh, we can also see the hood of the robe at the top. And also this is from the Middle East, but it is from Saudi Arabia. So you have two different Middle Eastern ones here together modern day Iran and modern day Saudi Arabia. Number seven is the Jade Song. Remember that this is Chinese or Asian. So it goes uh, together with a lot of art that we're gonna see coming up with that. It is carved stone. Uh, obviously it's Jade it's in the name. Uh, the circle and square represent heaven and earth. It has faces on the side. So we know that this is ritualistic and religious and it was found in graves. So we know it is a funerary object or a grave object. For content, there's your circle square, heaven and earth. For context, again, um, you need to know that it was found inside graves and this is not the only one. In fact, this is one of very, very many. Some are taller, some are shorter, etc. Number eight is Stonehenge. Everybody should recognize Stonehenge. Um, it's easily, very easily recognizable. For your form, you're going to have giant stones. Uh, they were imported from Wales, not carried on the backs of Wales, but Wales the country, okay? And you can say that it has a post and lintel structure. And you'll see this again in later architecture. Post on the side, lintel is on the top. For function, we know it was ritualistic or religious, and it's also a sacred space. So even though it is outside and we don't have that transition of light, we do know that it is a sacred space, possibly for pilgrimages, um, and it marks the summer solstice. That is the thing that makes us know that it is special. We also know that it's a burial site because of excavations that have found the bones of men around the area. For content, here's some vocabulary words that you should know or be familiar with. Sarsens, heelstone, lintels, trilithon, blue stones, and aubrey holes. For context, this is located in England on what is now called Salisbury Plain. 
And you can visit it today. However, you cannot go up and touch the stones anymore. Number nine is called the Ambum Stone. This is portable art. Remember, just like the Camelid Sacrum and the Apollo 11 stones meant to be carried with people. It's carved stone in a stylized animal. We think that it is possibly a baby anteater, but we are not sure. Uh, We know that it is ritualistic or religious. We know that it was constantly touched and used because of the way that it is worn down. We think it might have been an idol or some kind of uh, object for worship. And for context, this is Polynesian, which you'll see coming up in our next unit. Number 10 is the Tzlatliko female figurine. And this was also a grave object. We have lots of funerary art here. For form, you can say it was carved and painted. Uh, It is a stylized female. And it's also anthropomorphic. And they're very small, just a few inches tall sometimes. For function, we know it was ritualistic religious and shows um, the duality of human nature through the deformity of her face. For content, we have large hips um, and that those two faces. Um, for context, we found this in Mexico, and it is a grave object. You can compare this to the Jade Song because it was found within the graves or within tomb. For number 11, you have the terracotta fragments, uh, sometimes also called the Lapita stones, even though they are not stones, so that's a little bit confusing. Remember that these are incised or carved pottery fragments or parts says it right there in the name what it is. For function, since we only have a small part of the vessel, we think it was for storage, um, but we're not sure again. For content, you have these dots, dashes, and faces. So you're going to see the the dots and dashes and these geometric forms in future Polynesian artworks, and you're going to have to remember that. Uh, So that is your one thing that you need to remember about the Lapita stones. For context, you have your Pacific Ocean cultures um, or, you know, Polynesia, Melanesia, all of this. And they're all going to originate from the designs that we see in the Lapita stones. All right, so continue to study your own notes and your notes sheets and go ahead and get ready for your quiz. Good luck.